Hi, this is Matt from Smart Online Tutoring, and I'm going to show you how you can use Scribbler to tutor online. What's Scribbler? Well, it's a virtual classroom that you can use to collaborate with your online students. So think of it like an online whiteboard where both of you can see the same thing at the same time and interact together. I'm on the home page right now, scribbler.com, and they do offer a free trial. So you can try Scribbler without entering your credit card details, just by clicking this green button here. Before we do that, I want to just look at the plans and pricing. This is a paid for piece of software. They offer different pricing plans from starter to pro, and it depends on how many users you want to have per room or how many rooms you want per account. Now, if you're teaching just one-to-one -one individual students or small numbers of group students, then the starter should be okay for you to get started. Down here, we can see that they offer a 14-day trial, and that comes with their basic plan, which is three rooms and three users. So I'm going to sign up by clicking this button here, and you can just add your name, email, and password, and click Get Started. When you've added those details, you will be shown this sign-up page, which tells you that your first room is already being created and ready to go. So click the green button, Visit My Room Now, and this will open up your first virtual classroom within the Scribbler platform. So here I am inside my first Scribbler room, and as you can see on the left hand side here, this is the area where you will be able to write and add information for your students. On the right hand side here, you can see there are two tabs, participants. So this will show who is inside your room. At the moment, it's just me as I'm the admin. Um, but when you add students, they will show up here. And also you have this assets button here which you can use to add images, PowerPoints, etc., to your workspace here on the left. So let's go over a few basic functions to get started. The first one is to check your sound settings by clicking this button here. A pop-up will appear and it will ask you to either allow or deny access to your microphone. You can simply click allow and then you will be able to speak directly to your students using your microphone through the Scribbler platform. Now we need to invite someone to join the room. There are a couple of ways you can do this. One way is simply to scroll to the top here and copy and paste the URL from this section here, and then give that to a student via email or Skype message, for example. Another way is to click Room Options here and click Send Invites. There are two ways you can send the invite, either directly within your Scribbler account here, or you can even send it via your own email. If you click this, this will open up your email provider. Simply write the name, your email, and then the email of the person that you want to invite, and it will automatically add the URL to your room. Here's an example of the email that your student will receive when you send an invite using Scribbler. So it simply says, I'm currently online at scribbler.com, a great way to collaborate online in real time. Please join me now by following this link. Now, if I click this link here, it will take me to the room that was already open and the student will then be able to access. The student will be asked to sign in as a guest. So if the student is named John, he'll click there. As you can see, the student John is now part of the room and we can see on the right hand side that he is now here. If I go back to my own room here, this is my room, I'm the admin, and I can actually control how much access my students have to the board. So for example, I can toggle this here um, and give him different ranges of access from moderator all the way down to guest. 
I'm going to stick with moderator for now and let's look in a bit more detail at some of the functions on the whiteboard. On the right hand side we can start simply with things like the pencil and smooth pencil tool. If we click this one we can choose the color we want and then simply start drawing here. The line smoothing as you can see makes the line smoother. If I take that off it still remains sharp. There's a slightly different pen function here and a razor which we can use like this. We won't add any text simply by clicking this one, choosing the size that you want, and then this will create a text box which we can then add text in, like so. Um, this is the straight line function here, so if you want to draw straight lines at particular angles you can do so. Shapes, any kind of shape that you want to add here you can do so. Again, changing the fill color, etc. This one is the highlighter tool, which is a neat function. Again, choosing the color that you want as your highlighter, and then you can do things like this if you want to highlight a particular part of text. If you want to clear everything that you've added to your sheet, you can go up here and click this button here, clear page, click yes, and then that will get you back to your clear page. Uh, a neat function at the top here that you can use is called Wolfram Alpha. You can add various different texts and information to your whiteboard um, by either choosing one of the options here or entering a search here. So for example, if you're a physics tutor, you want to tutor a little bit about speed of light, simply click this button here and it will automatically insert data about this topic. If you want to delete this information, you can simply select it and then click this delete button up here. Let's say you want to focus on mass as an example and the multiplication table. And there we go, we can just add that straight into the document. A very useful feature of Scribbler is that you can insert your own images, PDFs, PowerPoints, Word documents and snapshots. So let's start off just by having a quick look at the image function. So we can click where it's got this plus button here to upload the image. These are the file types that are currently supported by Scribbler at the top here. So for example, a JPEG image would be fine. Click browse to search what image you want to insert on your computer and then click upload. So I've chosen a JPEG from my computer. I'm going to click upload now. And once the image has uploaded, it will go directly onto your page here. Now it's quite a large image, so I'm just going to resize it by dragging it down like this. And again, and now we can see the, the image here on the page. This image is also saved in your files here, so we can see there's a range of features that allow you to add multiple um, images and documents and store them on your room. I wanted to show you this picture because it's actually um, a Wacom tablet that you can use to draw directly into Scribbler. So when just drawing with the mouse on my computer, the writing is quite hard to control. As you can see, I'm doing my best here and not doing a particularly good job of writing on the screen. So let's have a look at how this compares when using this tablet device which you can use to draw directly onto the screen. So I now have the pen in my hand and I'm going to just test here to see how much easier it is. Aha! Yes, I can write faster. Still not brilliant handwriting. Um, but it's much easier and faster when you're using a Wacom pen tablet like this. So you can use it to draw and do all the other features. I would highly recommend using this kind of tool if you are using Scribbler to tutor your students online. It's a very useful bit of kit and will allow you to interact with the screen much easier and faster. So those are the basic features of Scribbler for tutoring online 
And as you can see, if I jump over to my students page, um, it's exactly the same here as it is on my page. So whatever you're writing on your screen, the student or students can see exactly what you see. It updates automatically. And so it's a very good way of interacting with your students and tutoring them online.